What's up, my Valiantpreneurs? Welcome back to the Valiant Volume. This is your host, CEO, Dan Spotsville. And I'm Michaela Mitchell. If you are a first-time listener, uh, in this volume, we talk about everything business, entrepreneurship, but most importantly, how to fucking kick ass in life. <laughs> yeah, right, boy. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I have some exciting topics for us to cover today. Okay. Um, but first, I really want to share with the Valiant preneurs that are listening some new and exciting news that's happened internally for Valiant. Okay. Number one being mm -hmm. our new hire. Oh, yeah. Nathan. Yeah, Nathan. He's over there. So, yeah, somewhere. So he's listening. I can't even today. see him from here, though. You don't need to see like him. Like, he's hidden. He's secret. <laughs> he's like Batman. You only see him when he needs to be seen. Either way, it's like, uh -huh. it's exciting because. I mean, we're hiring and something interesting that you told mm. me, Ooh, I just thought of this. Okay. So yes. something you told me and mm. that was interesting is about like, whenever you're looking at businesses that are looking to hire, like yes. look at why they're hiring. That's correct. Did they get an influx of capital. Is it because they have, uh, what was the other one? They, the revenue growth. Mm -hmm. And so something, I just started thinking about that a lot more lately because there have been candidates that have asked me, mm -hmm. you know, why are you guys hiring? Like, who, yeah. what's the need now? Did did you get fired? It's almost like they're looking for the tea. But, right. but no, the truth is, like, we genuinely are hiring so many different positions, like, mm -hmm. regularly now because yep. we're growing as a team. We have mm -hmm. we have the revenue. Yes. Um, the, we're in a growth phase. Yeah. No, that's a great point. I think if you're uh, if you're looking for a job out there, I think it's very important that. Um, you understand why they're hiring. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm not trying to, to to go in the negative direction, but just because of the nature of the th stuff that we do, right? Like capital raise. I just know sometimes like, especially like bigger companies, you know how sometimes they have massive layoffs in startups? Mm -hmm. That has to do with the fact that they get a lot of capital. They fluff like how the business is doing. So they'll hire like, you know, a bunch of different people for different positions, knowing that they're not making any money. But then when you hire like that, you eventually have to like let you have a massive layoff, you mm -hmm. know, like I've seen it happen. I'm not going to name any companies here, but I think a lot of people know, like in general, the type of companies that I'm talking about, yeah. especially like tech and startup. Like that's not like a, um, it's not an uncommon thing. I think it's more common than, than what people think it is. So yeah, if you're looking for a job, I say always look out and understand why they are hiring. Yeah. Um, and then to that point though, we're actually inserting like capital into our agency. Mm -hmm. Like we've gotten to this phase without taking a dime from the outside. You do know that, right? Like yeah. we haven't taken shit from, from anybody, not a loan, not an investor, not anything. Yeah. That's actually mm -hmm. why I paused in my like sentence. Cause I wasn't sure if I could bring up the, that piece you can. of the puzzle. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't mind. Uh, yeah. Thank you for mentioning it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Transparency is key. It's key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so with Nathan, I mean, he started this week as a digital marketing manager. Yeah, super excited. Uh, continuing to grow the ad build team, which just means yes. that we have more sales coming in because they're building the actual ads. Yeah. Um, another piece of the puzzle that's interesting is mm -hmm. one of the current job postings we have mm -hmm. for a content creator. Yes. Slash comedian. Yeah. You know why I said I wanted to hire a comedian? Not because I'm not funny enough. <laughs> No, you're funny, like for real. I think you're one of the, <laughs> at least like I like your sense of humor, but thank you. Um, you know, like I, I like to do what's right by like Valiant Digital, but then also simultaneously, like I, I always want to think that I think outside the box. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, what we're needing, like as we're brand building, right? So, like if you're a Valiant Preneur and you've been listening to some of our volumes, like you'll know, like from last year, that we said, hey, brand building is a huge thing for us this year. And we've made a huge push for it. And as we decided to make a huge push, we've been doing the podcast more consistently. Uh, you know, we started posting like those shorts just on one platform, which is only on YouTube, but every other platform is going to start to be, you know, we're going to have content there starting this week. Um, but I was like, you know, we want somebody that's going to be like a hundred percent or like at least like 75% of their, their, their day or their week is focused on content creation. And, you know, if you didn't know this, like I have a love for comedy. Like mm -hmm. I just, yeah. I follow so many different comedians and I realized this just recently about myself is that I listen to comedians from all different, you know, ethnic backgrounds or like just from different places. And if you look at my feed, you'll see a lot of stand-ups, like, especially on, like, my Instagram feed, you'll see a lot of stand-ups. And I said, why not hire a comedian um, to, to do content creation for us? Because they're, one, they're naturally usually funny. Obviously, like, there's people have different senses of humor. 
But with the things that we want this position to be, yeah. I think a comedian will be a great fit. And plus, we're giving them perks, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they having the comedian, it allows us to do a lot of the like man on the street type of comedy that you Man see. or woman on the yeah. street. <laughs> Hannah Burner does Hannah on the street. So yeah. it's whatever the heck you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh -huh. but to that point, it's like we have ideas of what would be interesting to capture like what it's like to be at an agency, mm. have agency life, you know, and yeah. it's, it's so relevant to the people who are listening to this right now. Like if yeah. you like this, you're going to love when we actually put out social content because it gives you insight on the day to day mm. where the backgrounds of these different people that we keep saying we're hiring have come yeah. from. Who actually like, works here. Um, but then also like, I think this person will allow us to kind of keep up with the trends. You know, that's on social media. So there's somebody focused on there and we could do some of the, look, I don't want to do the corny shit. Like, I don't know, like those TikTok dances, like you will never catch me doing <laughs> anything remotely close to that. But when I say trend, like keeping up with uh, like general conversations, if that's happening, like um, the first thing that comes to mind is like when Beyonce dropped that song, like we're already like the same day. Like we can have somebody the same day that's talking about that type of stuff and going around to team members asking what their thoughts are. So I think it'll be very helpful for us when it comes to brand building. And again, you know, when people come here, their goals have to be able to be realized here at Valiant Digital. So, you know, if we do really find the right comedian that really does stand up, because we have some people that actually do stand ups at like the Laugh Factory or like the improv, mm -hmm. um, the perk is going to be that we're going to edit their videos so we can help them achieve their dreams as well, too. So, yeah, it's a win win. Yeah, I appreciate you adding that. Mm -hmm. It's definitely been an interesting pool of candidates, but it's it's definitely <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> there's been more comedians that have actually started applying mm -hmm. since we've kind of filtered out what it is are good yeah. applicants versus like not so great applicants. Yeah, so. didn't you find like a comedian like a comedian job board or something? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. gig salad. Okay, I, I don't know much about it. Okay. Let me just state that, but <laughs> okay. I did notice that it is a place for comedians to post and look for gigs, and so I was like, oh, let me just see what happens here, and there's been a couple of responses. I just, it's it's been a day. I mean, we launched Luna this week, so oh, we've been busy. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Luna, Luna launch has been crazy. I think it's perfect time In to dive right into that. Yeah, sure. Um, well, again, if you've been listening and following us a little bit, um, we've been talking about this Luna AI software. Luna is named after my dog. Mm -hmm. Probably said that like 10 times. <laughs> um, but look, this software launched on, like officially launched on Monday. Like our internal clients have been having access to it. Mm -hmm. They've already had access to it. But I guess to, you know, people outside of our agency, that's not a client. We launched it. Um, I know we'll get into some of this stuff, but I was amazed at the amount of responses we got just from one one email and one text message. Um, actually, two. Uh, two emails and two text messages. And that number is like over 250 responses from... from uh, we sent it to 1,500 companies mm -hmm. initially. And we, we obviously chose these companies just based on the fact that, hey, we've had some sort of interaction with them over the last two years. Uh, but to have over 250 and, and, you know, Jared was like, yeah, it'll, it'll get to 300 by the end of today. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, remember within the first half an hour, it was like 75 or a hundred responses or something. So like within a three hour period, it was well over a hundred. Yeah. Whenever we called Jagger, like 30 minutes after the, the email text went out just to touch base with him, you like, just hear on the, yeah. Like, Hey man, how are you doing? He answers the phone. I'm so busy. And you hear, bzz, bzz. Bzz like it was yeah. on the phone like oh is, is that another one yeah um and then i think the the following day when we were mm -hmm. back at the office i looked at it and it was what 12 hours maybe that mm -hmm. 20 people had booked on his calendar for a, yeah a like full -on actually demo. booked on his calendar to say yeah. like hey tell me more about it walk me through um the luna ai software um yeah it's amazing like yeah. just off of like you know 1500 companies and uh you know i don't even have to tell you that we have access to to millions of company, you know, profiles and information of people and decision makers. So um, it's going to be a huge thing for us. I'm super excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With, it was cool to hear like what Jagger was saying that some of the responses were like the way that you mm -hmm. set up the, the messaging in it was so organic that it didn't feel like super salesy. So yeah, I think it was something as simple as like, Hey, so-and-so it's Jagger Luch. Yeah, pat on the back, Dan. Yeah. That's all it's you. It's called experience, buddy. Experience, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Wait. <laughs> um, hey, it's yeah. Jack Lucci. Like, it's been a while. That's what it was. It's That's been a while it. since we yeah, talked. Yeah, it's been a while since we talked. I finally have this like launch ready for you, and I thought it'd be so beneficial. Like, mm. and some of the people that responded said, "Hey, man, thank you so much <laughs> and like, for thinking about me." And I'm laughing because like. <laughs> It's funny. It, it's yeah. it's so serious because like they genuinely saw that as well. This yeah. human mm -hmm. looked back and thought about me, which is true. Yeah. Because, we genuinely do care about these yeah. companies. And, so, like, let me the, be serious here. For exactly. A like yeah. the truth is though, like with that launch that we're talking about from Monday, Jagger had been cultivating or like is that the right word? Cultivating? Oh yeah, kudos to him because like it wouldn't happen if he didn't build great relationships and yeah. part on a good note with companies that couldn't use our digital marketing services because of the price point where we put it up. Right. Yeah. So that, yeah. that whole launch on, uh, that whole launch was to the pipeline that he'd built that relationship with. There were all people that over the last, let's say like two years have opted in for Valiant Digital's digital marketing services. Right. They either weren't ready at the time, maybe weren't interested, didn't have mm. the budget for it. I mean, you name it, but Jagger had said, you know, we're working on this proprietary software. He's been we're talking about it since the... last July, he yeah. told me today. You yeah. heard him say that on the phone. That's crazy. He's been talking about the software since last July yeah. to, to people that couldn't afford our service. And so, like, the people that he put into this pipeline of, okay, that's who we need to launch Luna to. It's, it's not just a random group of people, a mm -hmm. random list of data. Like, it was very intentional. And so, like, that's why I want to make that point of, like, I'm laughing because it's so cool that we can use this technology. Mm -hmm to reach out to those people who we've done right by built that relationship with and made it and made that genuine connection so mm -hmm. that when automation and technology can be inserted, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's legit. It comes yeah. back with a real purpose. And yeah. Like, There's so many directions I want to go with this about people monetizing their audience and stuff. We've got time. Yeah. Take I know, it where like, you I, want. I'm just trying to think like where I want to go, but, but first I do want to give Jagger a shout out. Like, you know, I, I, I mean, we try our best to give people praises here, but um, I'm telling you, without him like talking to these people at a very professional level um, and keeping up, up with them, because some of the message that he did get a response from was like what you just said. But on, on the flip side, too, I think there were other other people that were saying like, oh, oh look, this is what I wanted mm -hmm. to say. He closed. He talked to one person today and he closed them on the call. Yeah. Like. <laughs> First time introducing Luna, the software, went through the pitch deck, demo the software, and they, they already paid the onboard fee, by the way. They signed the contract, paid the onboard fee, and then they're scheduled to, to talk to Ishmael, our senior digital marketing manager, um, so that we can onboard them tomorrow. But, like, I just saw the, the contract come in and all of this, and he only talked to them for 30 minutes. That's crazy. Yeah, but then also it was when he went back to his CRM, it was one of the people that he said he would contact back Um when the software launched so like this guy this company from this this gentleman from this company um uh, was waiting for for jagger to launch this software and he reached out like he said he would through our automation um and he closed the deal and he had, i think he had like five calls today um uh, mm -hmm. but but you know the other thing too is like we're very intentional with what what we've done and what we've done to this point so like jagger one jagger did his part of like talking to people about this software since last summer um I, I just saw an email just like last week where I said, hey, we're going to launch the software. And that was last March. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are exactly 12 months later launching the software. It took that long for things to get pre prepared. One, the software didn't have like AI integrated into it. So we integrated AI into this software. Um, and then two, you know, the first like what, 70 days of this year, uh, we've been working our ass off. And so as a team. Uh, but to be able to to build messaging, um, you know, creating all the content around it to be able to launch this thing, the process, the, the process yeah. of like, hey, how do we want to sell this? You know, who's responsible for what within the team? Like once they pitch it, you know, creating the pitch deck. I mean, there's a slew of things that went on in 70 days to get it to this point this week to where we were able to finally launch it. And um it's just starting like jobs not finished like yeah. kobe says like kobe says jobs not finished because it's not like now is a time like he has 20 plus people that he's going to talk to i still have the responsibility to to create content videos messaging automations around the luna software so to ensure the sales guys are busy yeah. you know and i'm upholding my promise to them saying like hey i'll generate the leads for you because we don't cold call here yeah i definitely thought that when we launch Luna, it's like 
it felt it seems so naive now that mm-hmm. we've like put in the work, but it's like it seems that it's an add on to what Valiant does. And mm-hmm. so like, oh, it'll be easy. Like add it on. You know, that's, like that's I can't the, say- <laughs> that's the that's the narrative I drove to you guys. I can't tell you like there's yeah. how many things you've added to my role. You've added to my plate. And like, yeah, it's just one more thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So okay. you don't even know. Like it just stacks on. You don't even know. Yeah. But then we really, the last 70 days, started really putting in the thought to everything that you just described. And when it came down to not just, okay, the mm-hmm. concept of what is Luna, but the the pitch deck alone. Where are we driving away the right points to make mm-hmm. sure that if somebody is distracted during a Zoom when we're demoing them, they can still capture all that information with the, when, with the follow-up email and takeaway. Mm-hmm. Now that we've figure out what the product is or the service and we pitch them, do they close on the call? Should we expect them to sign and, and pay right then and there? Is the there a follow up? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is there does it go through email or phone? How long should we wait? Should it be a one call close? Like, okay, mm-hmm. now that they've closed, is there like who's responsible for onboarding them? Mm-hmm. Is it still the salesperson? Is it yeah. one person and this person? What's on the form fill? Like what form the are they form. filling in? Yeah. Yeah. You you help with that. What a are lot. the right yeah. questions to ask them so that their onboarding experience is it's smooth? Is, see, yeah. And you don't have to go back and forth fifteen times. Yeah. You know, like some of these other places. How do we make <laughs> sure that the sales team has a unique calendar link? Yeah. The onboarding team. Wait, what like about this? the commission for the sales team? <laughs> There's so you know, many things. How do we write the copy? How do we set up the phono? Which team members are going to... I mean, there's so many different things that that we thought through. And look, let's be real. Once this thing kicks off, we got to work out the kinks, you know? Like, yeah. in terms of our process, not the software. Yeah, but yeah. Let me be very clear. The software works great. It's just, like, our process. How are, Like, I want to make sure, like, everything is smooth. And so far today, things have gone exactly the way it's supposed to. So yeah. tomorrow's another... It's the second half of of the new onboard. So I'm excited to see like uh, what that looks like for Ishmael. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was naive to think that it was just an add on because now Luna's it's, it's it can like be a that. standalone mm-hmm. service in itself. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to just be mm-hmm. when you work with Valiant Digital, you also have this awesome software. That can be the case. It is yeah. the case for all of our clients. But yeah. Like, it's also something that's a standalone and can yeah. be applicable to anyone outside of our clients. You can have so. a whole business just on SaaS, right? Software as a service, mm-hmm. like SaaS companies. Yeah. Uh, we're essentially becoming that, like software as a service. And you can you can build a multi-billion dollar, you know, business out of it. I mean, that's not the goal here, you know. But I wouldn't be surprised, like, if, uh, look, I just know we're going to get more software customers versus like just because of the price point of what the software is at where the software is at versus like our digital marketing full service like retainer type of like you know service that we offer so it just opens up another gateway um for us to increase our revenue uh increase our footprint within the dfw area so it has a lot of different benefits but i do want to add one thing i think a lot of times people underestimate the amount of work that it takes to to get something off of the ground um and I think that's something valiant preneurs should really like pay attention to, uh, because to the point that you're making, like I always tell myself a lie, like yeah, it's just a, it's just another <laughs> thing that we're doing, just you know. One more thing. Yeah, but it's but it's not to everything that we just said, you know, yeah. during this volume. So it's a lot of hard work, but if you do it the right way, if you don't cut corners, uh, the end result will speak for itself. Especially like you know on launch day and like testing the waters, you'll be able to see. Like all that hard work come to fruition, and then you say, "Great, job's not finished," and then you gotta go. Like you, like we just got to the starting point when it yeah. comes to launching the software. So we're we're we you start at a negative hundred miles, and we just got to mile zero. Isn't that what you say mm-hmm. too about like business. like starting a business? Yeah, like everyone thinks you can just start. <laughs> yeah, every like I was naive and thought like when I started this business, I got the website up. You know, I got my my business card. By the way, you don't even need. None of that shit when you start a business to begin with. A lot of people like are worried about the wrong thing. Like, I need an office. I need no. You don't need none of that shit. You, you need, need to test. Get your shit you, figured <laughs> out, buddy. You need to test the market first. Like testing the market. Like I think sharks talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great point of reference for at least my brain. They talk about hey, testing the market. Right. You can t- literally test the market for a lot of products, SaaS products, products and services for under like fifteen hundred dollars. You can literally test it out if you know what you're doing. Like test the market by like. Sure. Launching it? Yeah. Or like, um, I know that, you know, I, I think you just want to be very ethical when you're testing the market out. Uh, but like, I mean, there's at the very, like, 
high level doing a survey that's probably not the best way but i'm just kind of giving you one example or like if you're starting like a hoodie company you just go create 10 of these hoodies real quick right yeah you're gonna pay more and then you throw up a landing page on shopify and then you run paid advertising for 500 bucks i mean that's a, you could do that under 1500 dollars to test the market on your brand you know what i mean so like there's different ways depending on the industry that you're going into now like SaaS, something like like software you can't do that because it costs tens and thousands of dollars to get it going one you got to create the product two you got to know how to use it pitch deck you got to have a whole team around you to be able to do this thing so um it just depends on what you're launching yeah. but Speaking of best practices, mm -hmm. you had sent me something on Instagram yes. about like best practices when it comes to like acquiring your first hundred customers. Was mm. that specific to SaaS or was it just in general? That's in general, but okay. I'm happy to touch on it. Yeah. And before you touch on it, mm -hmm. I want to make the point that like it confused the heck out of me when you sent it to me uh, because at the very end. Yeah. Well, because of the way that he lists it out to me and you'll give more detail to me, it sounded backwards because we're in paid advertising and he listed paid advertising as like the least helpful thing in the first hundred yeah to gain your first hundred clients and i was like yeah i literally walked him through and i was like dan what did you just send me this is wrong and you're like mm. you're not you don't understand so listen yeah, so will you touch on that because yeah. it made so much sense once you explained it yeah uh look for the listeners like i i shared with you the the most efficient way to gain your first hundred like clients slash customers mm -hmm. right let me just let me just put this context around it if you're launching uh, like a service, you know, or a product, um, this guy said paid advertising is the least effective way to do it. I don't agree 100% because we're in paid advertising and we know how to go get 100 clients or customers, right? Mm -hmm. But I do agree that if you do, if you have been in business, let's just say uh, for a couple of years, and you're launching like for us, like I'll use us as an example. We've been in business for, you know, close to seven years. And we decided to launch a AI driven software. Um, it is in our best interest to go to our clients first, which we already did and got those people to use the software. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing, and that's, that's as easy as a phone call, right? Right. You're, we're calling people or we're on the zoom and, and talking about, Hey, we have this software. We're going to take you from this software to this because it's a, it's a software that we are bringing to the marketplace. So that's option one. If you have that option, because you have an existing business. And two, for us, because we've talked to so many different people over the last couple of years, we decided intentionally to not put paid advertising first and do email and text campaigns to the individuals like our team members has encountered over the last couple of years. And, and, and here's why that's important. If you go to the people that you know first, one, you may have credibility with them already. Um, and because they necessarily don't work with you doesn't mean they don't like you. It just could mean that like, the price point was off or it just wasn't the right time. So like understanding that just simply sending an email and text that costs us less than $30, we got over 250 responses in, yeah. in two days and we only spent $30, but is it really $30? No, it's the years that we've put in to run this business and to be able to build that sort of like some sort of connection with them. That's why you want to go and e go the route of email and text initially when you launch uh, a software or a product to gain your first hundred customers, because it's not going to be an uphill battle. It's right. going to be like, it's either, yes, I want that product or service because I need it. And I, and I know you already, or no, I don't need it. So I don't need it right now. So like the bigger your base of connections that you have from your, um, uh, you know, brand building over the last couple of years or this trust that you trust that you've built over the last couple of years, that's the easiest way to get your first hundred customers. And then some people might say friends and family, but a lot of times your friends and family don't support you anyway. Yeah. Or they can't afford it anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? It's like mm -hmm. you're sometimes the friends and the family will likely show their support after you've made it and then be yeah. like, but mm -hmm. where were you whenever I was saying, I promise, I swear I'm going to be big. Show yeah. me the support now. <laughs> yeah. Look, I don't, I'm on the side of like friends and family aren't supposed to support you. Like it's not their dream. You know, like I take that stance because like if I take the stance of like, well, why don't you support me? And they don't, I'm just going to get disappointed. So yeah. like I'm on the side of like, no, they don't have to support me. And if they decide to support me, great. But I know they they don't have to support my business. They have to support me, though. There's a difference. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah, as long as they support me, I'm good. But anyway, um, so like, yeah. Go ahead. Was there anything else you wanted to add to Luna Launch or the, the first 100 customers before? Yeah, for sure. Uh, first 100 customers. 
use email and text if you have a base. Um, I think after that, you exhaust that or during that time frame, because like for us, like we already have bookings all the way through next week. That's um, crazy. <laughs> it's even, look, it's even created um, an in-person meeting for me and Jagger on Monday. Oh, really? Cause, yeah, because this guy saw he's raising capital. He was like, hey, I saw that you're launching a software. Can I talk to you in person? So he's coming to the office on Monday. He's making sure you're not AI. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, but look, after that, though, paid advertising is the way to go. That's that's our bread and butter. That's what we do. Yeah. But I can promise you can target whoever you want to. You know, this whole story of Valiant Digital, so I'm not going to get into it. But yeah. paid advertising is definitely key to scaling it from 100 to 500 to 1,000. So, I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Um, the second topic I had today mm. was about generally the impact of brand. Oh, There's something okay. you mentioned to me about being a faceless agency versus yes. having a social presence. And so mm. Valiant right now has minimal social presence but we do absolutely show a face um in the in the presence we have your face my face right hello welcome yeah. to valiant digital <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where that accent comes from. <laughs> i don't know i know it came from okay yeah. swear uh-huh. i used to like a friend of mine katie would attest to this that mm-hmm. anytime She'd see me. I'd be like, hello, welcome to bar. Like that what? was just like what the thing that? I would do. I don't know. It just, I've always, I've always what? done it. Um, but we're Valiant Digital, okay. not the bar. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> brand right. building. Um, yeah. So there's been a couple of podcasts that you and I have listened to mm-hmm. recently too, where they talk about like, I mean, we're always talking about customer experience. We don't have to touch on exactly customer yeah. experience, okay. but like That's it ties good. into it. Mm-hmm. We recently listened to a podcast where they were talking about like two different big brands and how, yeah, one big brand has a better product than the other, but the other one that has a less, an inferior product Mm -hmm. has better customer service. They built a better brand for themselves. They seem so much better or more relatable. And there's just, there's just something to be said about the brand that they've built Mm -hmm. that trumps the actual product they're providing sure so what are your thoughts on like having a faceless agency a faceless business versus like having that social presence and the mm. impact it has on brand yeah let me ask you a question though. uh-oh the tables yeah. have turned <laughs> <laughs> what? who's the okay <laughs> i made it weird <laughs> what happened who's the face of jc penny oh <laughs> like children like random children <laughs> through the ages of five to twelve so nobody okay yeah. who's the face of nike the nike symbol no oh. that is uh, not the response i'm looking for oh um michael jordan sure okay that's okay. one of that's one of many athletes who else who else represents nike i mean like literally like, who? look at it look at it <laughs> <need> <laughs> help to, to tell me who represents nike Wow. Okay, look, let me give you LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> you know the answer I was looking for? I know. So like, okay. <laughs> I'll just I gotta say the answer now because Yeah, I'm so my, sorry. The point, man, you did not help me with the I'm that so point. sorry for <laughs> so we didn't it's, practice this. <laughs> it's, it's okay. So like my point is I'm like, hey, who's the face of JC Penny? The answer is like nobody, because like there's nobody famous or like well known that represents JC Penny, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like the the CEO or anything is yeah. on on camera or on videos. So I don't know who the face of JC Penny is. It's just a brand. And there's nothing wrong with that. But follow follow along here. Who's the face of Nike? Well, Nike has many different faces in many different sports. Um, so like if it comes to tennis, it was Serena Williams for a, a long time. Mm-hmm. When it came to golf, it was Tiger Woods. You know what I mean? When it was football, you have so many different faces. But Nike is represented by the different faces. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And then if I go into a little bit more detail, I can say, like, you know, I'm talking about some of these retail brands. I don't know why today. But, like, who's the face of Macy's? Then you can be, like, um, there's different, like, uh, like celebrities. Shaq? I think. Huh? Didn't we see Shaq at the mall one time? Like, <laughs> what is no, Shaq? No, there was a Shaq, like, uh-huh. I'm, I'm being so oh, serious you're being now. serious right now? Okay. This is serious. No, there was, like, a Shaq. Um, yeah. I think of, like, sign. Martha Stewart when I think of oh. Macy's. <laughs> You know, or like Chase Bank is like Kevin Hart's been on there alongside somebody else. Skims is um, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now then, we're talking. Now we're talking. Yeah. Okay. So, or like, <laughs> like a digital marketing, like, like a marketing like company, right? What? Go ahead. Grant Cardone. Right? <laughs> yeah, I guess he's, a, I mean, he's real estate, oh, but like okay. to, for that real estate company though, right? Like at the core of his business, he's, 
he says he's real estate, but like, let's be real. He, he spends a lot of marketing. So mm -hmm. let's, let's just take the real estate side of his business. But like Grant Cardone is a face of, you know, his own real estate company. And we know somebody here in Dallas personally, um, that I'm actually calling today who owns over a billion dollars in real estate, mm -hmm. but you don't even know who he is online. Mm -hmm. But then like, but then he's, he's speaking at South by Southwest. So like, is it just your socials not popping? Cause like you're speaking over there. But anyways, this guy has a billion dollars worth of assets and he's interested in it, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, digital like agencies, like media companies, like Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, everybody knows kind of like who he is and he represents, uh, an agency, like a media company paid advertising. But my, my point is, you know, there's these two different types of brands, right? Brands that are faceless and brands that, you know, clearly who their face is. But for brands like Nike, though, I think they put them, you put them in the third category. They have so many different faces representing them to the people that like that individual. Mm -hmm. So if you're a tennis player, then you follow, you buy Nike because of, you know, the certain tennis player, because that's where they're sponsored by. Yeah. You know, if it's like, like, you know, basketball, I mean, Jordan's obviously LeBron James, you know, and all these other individuals that yeah. are signed by Nike. Having that element mm -hmm. of the face of the brand almost gives like adds an additional audience to who your, your target audience could be by saying like, simply, if you like this person, you, you may want to like purchase this product or like work with this. Agency yeah, that definitely like, happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like, I feel like trying to think of a specific example, but like, I know there's been a time when I like a certain like influencer or somebody on social media and they, mm. they, they release something and I'm like, Oh, well, I like them. So like, sure. I'll support it. So you buy you know it. What yeah. I mean? yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, there on the, on the flip side, there was like an email I got today about a company who saw, you know, one of the job postings that we had for the comedian mm -hmm. and they sent an email back. Hey, would love for you to post on, you know, our platform but to your point of faceless like there wasn't an email signature there was nothing to identify to attach this email to a face and name a company to anything mm -hmm. aside from the words that were typed by someone maybe yeah. mm -hmm. that like it just it adds that additional element to right. me personally about like okay i it makes it trustworthy it makes it relatable yeah. it makes me want to proceed sure look brands brands evolve over time right so you can always start look there is no right or wrong way to approach it i think you want to make a decision as a valiant entrepreneur like if you're starting a business or you do run a business do you want to have a faceless brand or do you want to have somebody else represent your brand like a spokesperson like state farm Oh, you Jake know? from State Farm. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you have that option, or you yourself as the owner represent the brand alongside other team members. I've made the decisions to do the last, like, to represent Valiant Digital, put my face in front um, alongside of you and some of these other people as we, you know, uh, gain more momentum and, and do some more things um, proactively on social media. So, I've, I've chosen that route. But there is no right or wrong route, though. But I do think there are a lot more pros than cons, at least in my industry, and because there's so many variables. But I think at least in the agency world, I think there's a lot of pro of being like representing yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because one, you get the vibe of like who we are because culture is big in marketing, right? Like there's just no way around it. Like the way your culture is at an agency is huge and it contributes. It's a huge portion of why an agency fails or succeeds. Um, two, you witnessed it yourself yesterday when I got on a call of, of somebody that Jargo was talking to. They were like, hey, I want to talk to the CEO. I hopped on the call with them. Uh, they even sent an email. You saw mm -hmm. that. Uh, but at, towards the end of the call, the, the guy, insert Mr. C, he was like, hey, man, I feel like I already know you. Because like they, he watched a couple of our different podcasts. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, did I drop the F-bomb a lot? And he was like, nah. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. But anyways. Um, yeah. But that allows us to close more deals easily because they feel like they know us. And if all the other boxes check off for them, they'll send an email like they did today. And they'll end up working with us. Right. So that's the. And look, again, you can't keep sustaining this. But I could tell you Gary Vee, for example, closes a lot of big deals. Because he has a social media following, because he is the face of the agency, and if the potential client's values align with the person that's representing that organization's values, then you're more likely to do business with that individual. Because business people do business with other people. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of pro to it. Yeah. That was 
it was interesting with like that guy that you Mr. C. Mr. Um, C. Whenever Jagger mentioned it to you, like mm -hmm. it's not common anymore that he will come to you and say like, "Hey, they 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 need or want to meet with you or mm -hmm. somebody like." above him yeah because some of these deals are big though yeah i mean i don't yeah. blame them yeah yeah um but listening into that call mm -hmm. i thought it was really cool that like they did make a point to say hey us requesting to like meet with you dan wasn't any jab at like jagger's ability to present the information to pitch us to sell us to like right. communicate what it is that y'all do in an effective way that's not the case in my own words, they were really just like, it's a vibe check. <laughs> we wanted to meet with so one too. more person at the agency to make sure that like everything that Jagger is pitching so well and communicating is still true at one step above that. It's not just he's a good sales guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think nice. that is a great point that you're bringing up. And, you know, they're they were just doing their due diligence. Yeah. And I think they just genuinely wanted to meet me yeah. because, you know, they did watch our podcast. Yeah. He told me he watched a few episodes. Maybe he went home and was like, told his wife or whomever was like, hey, <laughs> what are you about look who say? I met. I met Dan, the guy <laughs> yeah. we listened to. You know? One day I'll get there. Not now. <laughs> hey, who yeah. knows? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to find the right paths to get you, sure to get you in the right speaking yeah. opportunities. Mm -hmm. but. Um, there was one other topic that kind of ties our two topics together today. Sure. So like the okay. AI launch for, for Luna mm -hmm. and the impact of branding. And the third thing was just like the follow through mm. that comes with all of this Yes, and how we launched Luna to that pipeline that Jagger had built. If the follow through of what he had said he was going to do wasn't there or that like relationship building wasn't there in the first place that launch would not have been as successful. That's correct. Or like the impact on branding for having a faceless or not faceless brand. It's like when you do the follow through and and you you just you do what you say you're going to do. It makes that much more of an impact or it could I mean negatively impact you if you have a face on your brand mm -hmm. and you don't follow through what you're going to say. I mean they might feel like we can uh, we can take a jab at you a little bit closer yeah, to where it hurts sure. because like they mm. feel like they know you and you've done them wrong. Yeah. And so this is the third topic. It's it's not as in depth as the first two. It's just like the impact that follow following through has mm. on your success or honestly yeah. on the, I think the chatter that happens. You know. Yeah, I mean, I can apply follow through on every level. You know, yeah. like, um. And again, we're, we're an agency, so like I'll speak from just like personal experience and what's happening here. Uh, but it starts with, you know, like our clients interact with Jagger initially, you know, and now Nick. So, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes me, like on rare occasion, right? But the follow through part is important from the moment you engage with a potential client. Um, and what I mean by that is like when you, when Jagger says to a client like, hey, I'll email you today before end of day, you got to follow through or he knows he's going to lose a sale because the lead, the last thing you want to do is tell somebody you're going to do something in a sales position and then not send them the thing because that trickles down into, and this may not be true, but the thought process of that particular potential client is going to be like, well, he didn't even send me the email. How are they going to tell me they're going to generate leads for me? That can't mm -hmm. be true. Like they just start correlating things that's not there. Yeah. But who's to blame here it's us if we don't follow through so like from the sales process you got to follow through then when it gets over to our onboarding team when they say they're going to show up to a meeting you got to follow through and show up to the meeting when you say you're going to hit certain deadlines you got to do that our video has to do the same thing yeah. our marketing managers that build the actual ads has to follow through with everything that they say i personally have to follow through with what i tell the team hey team I'm going to do X, Y, Z, pay me models starting April 1st. <laughs> I'll say it on this podcast. Yeah. I'm going to follow through and make sure we insert that model into our agency. When I tell Jagger and Nick, hey, I'll have this pitch deck ready for you for Luna. Um, as much as I kind of shot myself in the foot and made myself work for extra, extra hours, which I'm happy to do. But I made commitments and I said I'm going to do it. I follow through so I can continue to to earn the trust of our team here so like following through is like super important for success when it when you're building a business man do you know how many people in the last like month told me that they're gonna do something family friends mm. potential clients or vendors and they didn't follow through yeah. a shit ton and guess what i don't fuck with them i just don't because like if you don't follow through with what you're gonna say what makes me think you're gonna do these other things yeah you know you're not responsible to yourself
Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I mean, got like, a little too serious there. I, got, I, I felt I could hear a pin drop. Um, I'm not scared. I'm fine. <laughs> Did I get all serious? Right yeah, very serious. Um, but so mm. <laughs> looking at the clock, we yeah. have only a few minutes left for sure. this volume. But mm -hmm. one thing I want to say on top of what you just shared. Follow through. <laughs> I'm going to follow up <laughs> yeah. with like as a salesperson, as a business owner, as mm -hmm. a freaking human being, as you closed it out with, anyone can do this. Mm -hmm. Set the right expectations for your follow through, for your follow up. Mm -hmm. If you can't get to that shit today, you set that clear first so you're not shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. You're not overworking yourself. Mm -hmm. I can, if it's 4 p.m. and you're closing at your Zoom call and you still have two more, mm -hmm. that's probably what Jagger's calendar looks like. Yeah, hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll get you this follow up by the morning. Mm -hmm. set, set better expectations for yourself, for that person that you're talking to, yeah. so you can meet those follow-ups. And in fact, add a buffer on there. I know that's mm -hmm. helped for me because if I know that I could get to it today, yeah. but there's a possibility that I won't, push it a couple hours. Mm -hmm. they, in the beginning, they're not going to know the difference, but it mm -hmm. will set the expectation that, or set the stage for I exceeded their expectation mm -hmm. rather than not hitting the mark I set for myself yeah. that I wasn't prepared to meet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think what you're also saying is like communicate, you know, yeah. like communication is important, uh, especially when you're, when you're in the trenches and you know, you have customers as communication is important. Uh, building a business, like communication is important with your clients, potential clients. So like all of these things that we're talking about today, for whatever reason, applies to every aspect of your business. I personally think it, it applies to your personal life, communicating with your spouse, communicating with your fiance, um, like whoever it is. Your kid, all, who cares? Yeah, your, yeah like all <laughs> of that is important and following through for your kids, doing yeah. what you say you're going to do for them, yeah. you know, all of that showing up on time like all all of that stuff matters <laughs> okay <laughs> so on that note um yeah we're gonna close out the episode mm -hmm. with a friendly reminder mm -hmm. that you owe me a deck um <laughs> <laughs> the video deck right by tomorrow <laughs> yeah i know i got um, this i gotta pitch it yeah so thank you yes, for welcome. meeting that yeah. deadline welcome in advance <laughs> um, anything else that you want to make a comment on mm -hmm. or share with our valiant preneurs, whether it be the launch of a new software, mm -hmm. um, our software, the yeah. branding and mm -hmm. the impact it has, or just the topic of following through? No, I, I think today, like if I'm on what I'm on today and the last couple of weeks, um, my final thoughts here on this volume is like, look, if, if you're on a path of like, really trying to make it and being successful and whatever success means to you and however you define that early on this year, um, man, just focus and cut out all the noise, you know, cut out everything out that doesn't, that doesn't contribute to where you're looking to go. Um, you know, and this year I've done that. Some, some of the, the cutting off and not doing stomach, starting from drinking, you know, I'm about 95 days in of not drinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. All right. Congratulations. For me. Yeah. I've kept my promise to myself. Um, so just you know don't lose focus this year we're about to hit we're about to hit the end of q1 wow. this is mid-march you know uh, a lot has changed for us and and that has to only do with the fact that we follow through with everything that we said we're gonna do and we've stayed disciplined so um if you're in there stay in the fight keep it fucking rocking yeah to all those valiant preneurs out there, um, we are currently building our socials. So you might may start to see the suggested follow for our TikTok, our Instagram. Mm -hmm. Follow them. There's not much content there yet, but we are actively working on doing that. There's so much in the archives, to, or not archives, but in uh, in the pipeline that we're going to yeah, be posting yeah. soon. Mm -hmm. You can follow us uh, on YouTube at the Valiant Volumes YouTube page. And if you have any questions, thoughts, guests, mm -hmm. topics you want to talk about, Hello at Valiant Digital is the best place to reach us or in the comment section. So yeah. all that until, being said. Until next volume. Peace. <laughs>